but first, Meredith and Bill Schrader's labor of love. In 1983, the couple visited the National Quilting Association show in Bell Buckle, Tennessee. They were so inspired by what they saw, the Schraders decided that these astonishing works of art deserved nothing less than their own museum. We bought this, this property downtown Paducah here, and it was a, a first degree case of economic obsolescence. But it was Bill and Meredith Schrader's field of dreams. Bill approached Mayor Jerry Montgomery with a plea. He said, I really want to build that museum. I promised the quilters I want to do it. And uh, so I said, well, what, how can I help? Mayor Montgomery brought Wallace Wilkerson here. He was the governor of Kentucky. And we stood out on the corner of this facility. And he said, I'll tell you what, Bill, if you'll spend a million dollars in downtown Paducah, I'll put $5 million down here. And that kind of got things going. The Schrader's passion for quilts, and their business savvy, transformed over 20,000 square feet of urban blight into the Museum of the American Quilters Society. Opened in 1991, it houses and preserves over 200 contemporary quilts that document a flourishing quilting revival. People will drive 100 miles out of the way if they're interested in quilts. You know, they're not bed blankets any longer, that's for sure. The museum attracts visitors from all over the world who come here to celebrate quilting as art. We tend to think of art as sort of a paintbrush and paper, but this is a different art, and it is truly art. A great quilt like a great painting will speak to you right off the wall. Susan Talbot Stanaway is the museum's executive director. She is charged with creating a contextual space designed to enhance the quilts as well as the visitor's experience. This exhibition was designed to really lead the viewer, to lead the quilt lover into it. And so what you wanted to provide when you looked into the gallery is a far sight line. And Barbara Barber's quilt, Godot and Friends, is your far sight line. Now, that has some interesting colors, but it also has animals in it, which attracts the eye. Visitors this day got an unexpected treat when renowned quilter Diane Gadinsky, who has four quilts in the museum's collection, made an impromptu appearance and talked with enthralled fans. If you look at some of the other quilts, you're like my really dull butternut summer. I think when this museum opened, it was a landmark because it's honoring today's quilters. And I think it meant the world to today's quilt makers. They want to be in this museum because once they're in here, they get a lot of exposure with 60,000 people coming through every year. You want to give the visitor something that they take away that is truly unique to this museum. Visual excitement, you want them to walk away thrilled. Many of those sentiments are chronicled in the museum's guest register. Beautiful beyond words, well worth the trip. A log that has become Bill's touchstone. I'm telling you, that's, uh, that's my high. When I read, uh, I get all choked up. <laughs> Very emotional. Sentimentality aside, Bill's true gratification comes in knowing he's created a lasting legacy, a quilting endowment for generations of people to love and admire. And every year, the collection and the outreach of the Museum of the American Quilters Society gets bigger and better. <laughs>